one of the most powerful ways to stimulate a healing response in the body is to stop eating. Why is that? Huge amount of energy is required to digest a meal. One writer called it just like an explosion on the human body. 1200 calories is required to digest one meal. That's quite phenomenal, isn't it? So what happens when you don't eat? Well, all that blood and energy is looking for something to do. It can be likened to what happens when you go on holiday at home. I don't know about you, but I go to the parts of my house that are bugging me. <laughs> Every day we sweep the floor, we do the dishes, we make the bed, do the, wash the clothes. But you know, there's the basics, but there's all those little extra things that you wait for a bit of spare time to do. That's exactly what's happening in, to, in your body today. And in each body in front of me here, the the energies are going to different parts, to the areas of greatest need. Now, the before the body can restore or regenerate, it must clean the house. That's why this program is often called a cleanse or a detox. The house has to be cleaned. As the house gets cleaned, there are four main organs of elimination. And number one is the skin. The largest organ of elimination is the skin. Your skin has millions of little mouths. If you were to look at it under a microscope, you'd see all the tiny little holes. Dr. Kellogg, very famous doctor, he's of Kellogg's cornflakes flame, fame, although I think that he would nearly die if he could see what Kellogg's cornflakes are made of today. It didn't quite have the sugar in it that he had in his. But he wrote many books on health. He was the medical director of one of the largest natural hospitals in America, Battle Creek, 1,000 beds. <laughs> so many, he wrote many books on it. He called the pores of the human body millions of little sewers. Why did he call them millions of little sewers? Because they give off waste. They're an organ of elimination. Have you ever had a white shirt on, especially on a hot day when you're perspiring a lot, and the collar is brown? What's the brown? It's dirt. Where did the dirt come from? Inside of you. So the skin is a very effective organ of elimination. To be an effective organ of elimination, it has certain needs. It requires you to allow your skin to breathe. How can we ensure that our skin is breathing? Very important to be mindful of the creams that you're putting on your skin. The body knows coconut oil, it knows essential oils, it knows olive oil. What it is not familiar with is the many chemicals found in most moisturisers. If you have bought moisturisers with you, please check our little books in the bookcase, especially the chemical maze. We've got a few books there that show you the, what all those different names mean. And if you do have some chemicals in your moisturisers, please don't apply them because we want the waste out. We don't want to be putting more poison in. And everything you put on your skin is absorbed into your blood. It's, they're like porous. They take it in and they also give it out. If you do need a cream to moisturize, ask the staff and they'll give you a little coconut oil. You might think, well, isn't coconut oil thick? At first it might seem thick, but it actually absorbs very nicely. It may take a little longer. You will be massaged with coconut oil, so you'll be able to see how beautifully the skin absorbs the coconut oil. Allow your skin to breathe by not putting the oils on it. Please don't use sunscreens. But if you want to go out into the sun, wear a hat, wear a, wear a, uh, a, a shirt or a skirt. But if the sun is very hot, you should not allow your skin to be exposed to it, even if it has sunscreens on it. Still being damaged, it just masks the damage. Have you seen what's in sunscreens? A lot of chemicals in there. Another thing to be mindful of to allow your skin to breathe is to make sure you have two washes a day. At, at night in the steam bath, it's definitely a good washing of the skin. The, the rubbing in of the magnesium sulfate, the Epsom salt, causes the more waste to come out of the body and the dive in the creek. But after your morning walk, it's another good time to ha also have a shower to keep the skin clean so that the waste is being taken off. The clothes that are touching your skin, very important that they be changed every day or washed every day. I'm not talking to things like skirts or pants that are on the outside, but more what is touching your skin, especially your torso area, because more waste will be thrown out of those areas than is usual. So it is in that way that you allow your skin to breathe. 
And the final one is being mindful of the fibers that are touching your skin. Please don't put any acrylic, nylon or polyester against your skin. That's like putting plastic against your skin. Especially when you heat up, those plastics heat up and they and your skin absorbs the chemicals from those plastics. Natural fibre are silk, linen, cotton. By the way, if you buy cotton, wash it and put it on the line before you wear it because it's the most sprayed crop in Australia. Some other natural fibres you may not be aware of is viscose, rayon and tensile. They are all made out of wood pulp. And another fairly new product is Modal, M-O-D-A-L and it is also made out of wood pulp. It's actually the cellulose spun from the birch tree. So you can get some very nice fibres now that some people think they're man-made. They're actually sourced from natural materials. Also, your skin needs you to exercise because when you exercise, the circulation of the blood increases to the skin and when the circulation of the blood increases to the skin, it's very easy for the blood to throw off the waste via the pores and that's why you'd also be perspiring on your morning walk. Your skin also needs you to be drinking sufficient water. Let me break down the water loss for you every day. Via your kidneys, it's about a 1.5 litre loss. Via your skin, it's a 0.5 litre loss. Via your colon, it is a 0.3 of a litre loss. And via your lungs, it's a 0.2 of a litre loss. So that's two and a half litres of water is lost from the average human body a day. Probably bring that up to nearly three in this weather and with your steam bath at the end of every day. There's no reserve tank on the back, have you noticed? The only water we put in, the only water we get is the water that we put in. So it's very important to make sure you're well hydrated. So very important for the water to go in. What about juice? Well, how clean would your body be if you washed it in juice? How clean would your dishes be if you washed them in juice? You are getting some fluid in. I advocate at least two litres of pure water a day. The other five or 0 0.2, 500 mils, that will come from your juices or your food. So uh, you are getting a little through there. Also water out, as I mentioned before, is the, is the steam and your baths. Or showers. When you give your skin, your body, optimum conditions, up to 70% of body's waste can be eliminated via the skin. Now that's quite a phenomenal piece of information, isn't it? And that is, quite, that is why the skin is often called the third kidney. Because when given optimum conditions, up to 70% of body's waste can be eliminated via the skin. What about deodorants or antiperspirants? I do advise you don't wear them this week because we don't want any blocking of the waste coming out. One lady said, you don't want to be near me if I haven't got it on. I said, we've got a lot of water. <laughs> Have several showers. One lady told me she was sitting next to another lady and she thought, oh, that lady has a strong odour. And then later that night she put her arm up to get something and she realised the odour was coming from under her own arm. <laughs> Rejoice! Where was, the, where was the waste before it was coming out of you? It was inside your body. The second organ of elimination are your lungs. We don't often see it as an organ of elimination. But let me show you what happens in that little energy cycle where the glucose goes in and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine approximately chemical reactions before the energy comes out. These cells can run aerobically or anaerobically. An, ana an aerobic cell is a cell that uses oxygen and glucose to burn energy and the waste that comes out is carbon dioxide. So that's the waste that's given off from the combustion of the glucose in that cell. And that gaseous waste from the combustion of glucose and oxygen is released, the majority of it is released out of your lungs. So your lungs take in the oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Some cells are forced to run anaerobically. 
An anaerobic cell is a cell that runs without oxygen. An anaerobic cell, instead of giving off carbon dioxide, gives off lactic acid. An aerobic cell will deliver to you 18 times more energy than an anaerobic cell. So ladies and gentlemen, how are you going to feel if every single one of your cells is running aerobically? Whew. You're not going to be able to hold you down. Now you know Howard's secret. Hey. <laughs> Anyone with chronic fatigue, I say to them, do you exercise? And what will their answer be? You don't understand. I don't have the energy to exercise. Well, how are you going to get it? You actually move the body. You will receive more energy than you expend on your morning walk. Because when you go on your morning walk, you start to breathe a little bit deeper, you get more oxygen, which means more of your cells can now run aerobically. You see that? One lady had chronic fatigue. She heard my exercise lecture. She thought, right, I'm going to do it. So she ran, walked 5Ks, got back home, fell on the lounge and said, see, I told you it was no good for me. Another lady, she said, I will start with what I can. First day, she walked around the block the first day. Second day, she walked, sorry, the house. Walked around the house once on the first day. Twice the second day. Three times the third day. Fourth times the fourth day. Fifth time, she walked around the block. That's how you do it. The, the first lady, she just pushed her body beyond what her body was telling her to do and quite possibly hadn't hydrated her body and so she was actually a cot case for the rest of the day. And she said, see, told you exercise was no good for me. Can you see that? We are the doctors. You start with what you can. And when you're walking up that hill and your thighs start aching, it's actually a build-up of lactic acid from perhaps not getting enough oxygen in over the last two weeks. What's the cure? Stop, look at the view, wait till the pain goes and keep walking. <laughs> because the more oxygen you get in, the more aerobic cells that you will get. There are two cells that love to run anaerobically and that is a cancer cell and that is a fungus cell. You just think about it. Fungus hates the light, hates the, hates the air, likes the dark, moist areas of the body. Where does fungus like to live in your home? Dark, moist areas in your body. You open it to the sunshine, what happens to it? <laughs> it annihilates it. How do you get rid of it? Well, we can get rid of it the way our grandmothers get rid of it. Sodium bicarb powder white vinegar just annihilates it. As you will see in Is Your House Killing You, Dr. Dingle, he shows you, he shows you bleach kills mold and feeds fungus. So when you put bleach on mold, you're feeding your next crop of mold, <laughs> but white vinegar kills mold and kills fungus and doesn't kill you like the bleach does. Bleach is a chemical and it can interfere with your, your DNA. This is why uh, Dr. Talio Simoncini was having so much success with cancer. He would inject sodium bicarb straight into the cancers. We can't quite do that, but you know, we can alkalize the body from the outside and the inside. And on Thursday, I'll be giving a whole lecture on the acid alkaline. So that's how you get rid of it out of your home. You can buy a paste in the supermarket called gumption. Are you familiar with gumption? It's just sodium bicarb paste. So it's not going to kill you, but it's going to kill this nasty stuff. And again, find out why it's there. Do you need to get a skylight in? Do you need to get some fans in the bathroom? Do you need to open it up wide? Do you need to get a plumber in and assess if there are any leaky taps? So what your lungs need is fresh air. I was very happy when we came in here and saw the huge big ceilings, saw the huge big windows. Just had to chop down a few of those trees to let that sunlight and air in a little bit more. Our lungs need fresh air. Our lungs also need us to exercise. Did you notice the morning, this morning on the walk that you started to breathe a little deeper, especially when you came to this hill? Breathing deeper means you're getting more oxygen in and you're breathing out more carbon dioxide. The more oxygen you breathe in, the more carbon dioxide can be released out of the body. And the more oxygen that's coming in, the less lactic acid is happening. One more thing I wanted to show you. 
I wanted to show you how this aerobic cancer fungus cells run in the energy cycle. There's only about five different chemical reactions once the glucose goes in and the energy comes out. But with an, anaero with an aerobic cell, the oxygen cell, there are sometimes up to 10 different chemical reactions before the energy comes out. This cell here consumes 15 times the glucose compared to a normal cell. This is the normal cell. This is a fungus cell. Dr. Holland in the book the germ that causes cancer, he said when you deprive cancer cells of glucose, they self-destruct because they're consuming 15 times. It can be as simple as that. This is how chemotherapy works. When chemotherapy comes in, this cell will consume 15 times the chemotherapy that this cell will consume. So more of these cells will die than these cells, but the fact is some of those cells die. It is a fact, more people die from chemotherapy than cancer. That is true. You've heard the saying, treatment was successful but the patient died. Now we've got a human being here that we want to <laughs> keep comfortable and alive for the term of their natural life. And that's how it works. This is the first day of lectures. As I go through the lectures this week, you will find that I will build on all of these concepts and they will more make, make more sense to you as we go. So the lungs need fresh air and they need exercise and the lungs also need water. If it was a cold morning, we'd be able to see each other breathing, wouldn't we? Because every breath that you breathe out, there's a little bit of moisture there. When the body is dehydrated, the, the little bronchioles shrink up and to conserve the water. And so dehydration can cause congestion of the bronchioles. Kidneys. Your kidneys do a very effective job at filtering your blood. Let me show you how the kidneys do this because they do it in quite a fascinating way. We have two kidneys, most of us. One lady told me she had three one day, but most of us had two kidneys. And there are one million filtering units in one kidney, and your kidney's as big as your fist. My six foot six brother in law has got a bigger fist than me, which means he's got a bigger kidney than me, and he needs it. Let's have a look at this little filtering unit. Remember, one million in one kidney. That's the filtering unit, and the waste or the filtrate from being filtered comes out and around these tubules down into the bladder. So the blood goes in, the blood vessel goes in, it weaves around the filtering unit and then it comes out and weaves around the, the tubules. So that's the bladder there. Whereabouts in the kidney are these filtering units? Here's the kidney and these little filtering units are all on the edge. It's called the cortex part of the kidney and these tubules basically weave, weave, weave down like that into the ureter, into the bladder and then the urethra is where the urine comes out. So there's the ureter from the other kidney. That's how it works. We filter out 1800 litres a day. Aren't you glad you don't have to drink 1,800 litres of water a day? That's because in this area, in the tubule area, there's a reabsorption of approximately 1,600 litres. But that 1.5 litres that's released out of there, that must be replaced every day. So very important for the kidneys to have water. Very important to have between two to three litres of water a day. Because when you're fully hydrated, that blood is nice and thin and it's much easier to filter thin blood. And when you're fully hydrated, pressure is built up in that filtering unit, which increases the kidney's ability to filter out the waste. Notice the blood vessel going in is bigger than the blood vessel coming out. Your kidneys also need to be warm. 
We are warm-blooded creatures and any part of our body that's cold, it's an indication there's not blood going into that area. If my, see my hand is quite pink now, it's warm. If my hand was cold, it would be white. My hand is only warm because there's blood in my hand. It is the blood that brings the warmth. Now there is a fashion today that is bare in the midriff area, has been for several years. And if you go around the back, it's right bare where the kidneys are. So the kidneys are getting cold. Now I'm not talking about cans in the middle of summer. I'm talking about Melbourne in the middle of winter. <laughs> we had a guy from Scotland come here. He said all the lassies, because they called girls lassies. He said they have boots on, woolen pants or skirt to here. They have beanies on, scarves, woolen jumpers to there. And he said there's this area of bear. See what happens is those kidneys, notice the filtering units are right on the edge, right near the skin, so they're cold. And the body's actually saying we've got a crisis. We can't filter the blood because the blood won't go where it's cold. That's why if your hands are cold and you rub them, they get warm because it's getting warm and the blood's coming into the area. So this area is cold. So the body says, we've got a crisis. The blood's not being filtered. The waste is building up in the blood. What happens then? Little microorganisms start to come along to clean up the waste. Can you see the scenario that happens? So the body says, we'll have to insulate the kidney to try and keep it warm. Now we don't have fur and we don't have feathers, do we? Adipose fat tissue stores start to develop on the kidney area. I'm told it's called muffin top, is that right? There's the belt. <laughs> Where are the slim wastes? <laughs> it's, because the, it's because the wastes are cold. <laughs> It's time to start wearing singlets. Remember singlets? In America they called them undershirts, is that right? <laughs> vests. I know in winter if I'm cold, if I put a singlet on or a vest, it's almost as warm as putting a jumper on. The body tells us keep it warm. A very nice way to increase a little bit of blood into the kidney area is to lie on your tummy and let the sun go onto your back. Try and do it every day while you're here. Remember, don't fall asleep and burn the skin, then you can't do it anymore. When you warm up that area, you increase the blood supply to that area. Anything that increases blood supply to that area increases healing because the blood is the healer. The blood has the white blood cells in it. It has the nourishment. It has the oxygen. It takes away waste. It's the healer. It's called the river of life because it contains life. If you stop life going to those kidneys, they will die. Amazing thing about the kidneys, and you probably know, we can even function with one kidney. And when the blood stops going to those little filtering units, those little filtering units can start to die off. That's a bit scary. The kidneys also need you to exercise. What does exercise do to the kidneys? What exercise does is it increases blood flow. On your morning walk, I'm sure you could feel your heart. That means the blood is pumping faster to the body. That means more blood is going into those filtering units. But something else happens on your morning walk. I want you to picture your kidney on your morning walk. Every step you take, what's happening to your torso? It's moving. And every movement, the kidneys are getting strengthened and toned to perform their work. At 1.15 today, Howard will take you through some Pilates type exercises, which are core strengthening exercises. And those exercises are fantastic for all your organs in your torso because it's moving those organs. The colon. Only microscopic waste can be delivered out of the skin, lungs and kidneys. The largest pieces of waste comes out of your colon or your large bowel or your large intestine. I'm sure it is of no surprise to you to know that the colon is not connected to the brain. You can't say to the colon, go. It won't, will it? We, we all know it. It has a mind of its own. I'm reading a book at the moment called The Second Brain. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it has a mind of its own. 
So the colon is very different. The colon needs stimulation. It needs to be encouraged and stimulated. And you'll like this one. A wonderful stimulation to colon action is laughter. And I must say, you're a very merry group. <laughs> no limit on the laughter. Now you know why we employ Howard. One of the reasons. Do you know, laughter, that gut laughter gives an internal jog. And what's getting the jog is the colon. The colon also needs you to exercise. As with the kidneys, so with the colon. As blood supply increases to the kidneys in exercise, so does it increase to the colon. But also the movement moves the colon. That's why if someone has irritable bowel or constipation, I suggest they do Pilates exercises regularly because moving this area here massages the colon. The colon also needs the stimulation of hydration, which is water. One of the main functions of the colon is to take water out so stools are formed. So you can pass with ease. In dehydration, more water gets taken out. That's when you get cement or rabbit pellets. The colon also needs the most powerful stimulation, which is probably comes from the fibre area. I was shocked when I was in America last year to read that colorectal cancer is number two killer coming up fast to number one. This is in a nation, there's too much stress, not enough laughter, exercise, no time, water, don't like the taste of it, fibre, takes too long to chew, isn't it very much so? But I tell you, we Aussies shouldn't be speaking because Aussies are not far behind. Aussies have actually overtaken Americas in weight gain, you know that. 62% of Australians are overweight. That's above America today. But I must say, when I'm in America, the size of them, they take the prize. They're big, are very big. <laughs> we went to the Minnesota State Fair. Huge people. Michael was going up behind them and taking photos of them. <laughs> Putting them on Facebook and saying to our unwed daughters, we found some partners. <laughs> fiber. The highest fiber food there is, is vegetables. Vegetables are high in fiber, high in minerals, low in sugars. Fruit is high in fiber, but it's high in sugars and low in minerals. So for some people dealing with yeast problems in their body, they need to go more to the vegetables. But the colon needs the fiber. We're not giving you any fiber for two and a half days, so we're going to be giving you herbs. And those herbs gently stimulate the peristalsis of the colon. We just need you to let us know if you need more or less. These are four organs of elimination. If one goes down, that puts an extra load on the others. That's why the steam bath is such an essential part of a detox because when we really zoom up the skin, it takes a load off the other three. Many people think they don't need to evacuate when they're fasting because they're not eating anything, but they don't realise that the waste that can't be fitted out of the microscopic areas must be eliminated via the colon. So very important on a detox that you evacuate ideally at least twice a day. And if that's not happening, we have some herbs that can help to encourage that. There's one more organ of elimination, little tiny member called the tongue. When you're on a detox, you know it clearly because what's the tongue like when you wake up in the morning? My father went on a detox once and he said, my tongue feels like the foul house floor. <laughs> that's the waste coming out of the tongue. And that's where oil pulling can be very effectively and eliminating that waste. Now we have put the oil there and the spoons are already there, so please try and do it a couple of times at least, ideally three times a day, just when it suits you. You take a spoonful of the coconut oil, you put it in your mouth and you swish it. Don't swish it non-stop for 10 minutes or you're going to get very sore <laughs> muscles. But just do a swish and a rest, a swish and a rest. And there are so many little colonies that live in your mouth. It's quite phenomenal. And 
What the oil pulling does, because of the antibacterial, antimicrobial effect of the coconut oil, it knocks out the bad ones, it encourages the good ones, and it's pulling out waste from your tongue as well. It's pulling out some waste from the main arteries that can go under your tongue. There's quite a science in it. So after about 10, 15 minutes, go outside and spit on the grass. Don't spit down the plug hole. You might clog us up. <laughs> and when you spit it out, have a look. That coconut will not be clear any longer. It will be white. That is the waste that it has pulled out. When you've done that, rinse your mouth a couple of times with, with clear water. So your tongue is a little member, but it also is a member that can eliminate the waste. The organ of your body that is orchestrating the detox is your liver. Your liver is your project manager and your liver lives under your right rib. And tomorrow, our first lecture, we're going to be looking at your project manager. Happy project manager, happy job site. Yeah? And tomorrow, when we look at how your liver works and what your liver needs, you will realise that it needs to be nutritionally supported and it will also explain some of the supplements that we are giving to you over the day, which are designed specifically to nutritionally support your liver to be effective in the detox program. Thank you for your attention. My time is up and there are treatment times. <music>